right, good morning, folks. <laughs> I'm Steve Jennings from Grass Horse. Welcome to uh, Robot Chores. And um, we have some parts to look at, or we have a part to look at. So this is what we made in the last episode. And so I 3D printed it out in uh, transparent um, ABS yesterday. The PLA wasn't working. It looks like I didn't get all the support out of there, but I got most of the support out of there. And, um, you know, it turned out, it turned out a lot better than I really, than it should have, because we haven't, you know, modeled this part yet to the servo. We haven't modeled the, the wire coming out of it and that little rubber, I guess it's a grommet kind of deal. That's not there, but this does fit in here. Just awesome. <clears throat> and, um, you know, it, uh, that rubber grommet fits in there. There actually is some clearance inside there. And uh, just by the way that the whole thing was designed, it, it, it fits in there, so that's great. And on top of that, I don't know where it went now. Give me a second here. The little white doodad that holds in um, holds the servo in place, fits. So, look at that. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Pro, man, we are so professional. So professional. So anyway, now that we have this dude, and yes, this will not sit directly behind it, it'll sit at an angle. And so, um, you know, how high do we want to have this have this servo. Mm -hmm. So I want to I mount it in there. And just because these are set up like there's a pair for each one, we do not have to put a whole, there's no reason to put a whole batch of servos in there. You just put one in there that you, where you need it. Now I think if I look at this right, with something like this, it will rotate back and forth. So I think that's probably pretty good. Yeah, it is revealing this thing, but whatever. We can make a different one that will then not do that. We gotta make sure that there's clearance in the rotation so it doesn't bump the ground. <clears throat> Essentially, I want it to feel like there's a handle back here and that you're rotating it from that handle, like a person's rotating it. And really, let's see here, I think about that height is the right height for this, for this, this one. Now, so we can go through and make, uh, I'm going to pop that in there. So now that is fixed in there. <clears throat> Three more of these little dudes. These are awesome because you can. Just pop them in there super quick. You don't have to screw anything in. It doesn't damage the servo. Um, and yeah, we can change them out super quick if we need to. Uh, like, oh, that's too high. Well, move it down. If that's too low, you know, move it the other way. Now, the question is, which I'm already worried about, is how much does that actually keep that from moving though? Not a lot, look at that. That's just like shaking a lot up and down. I don't know if there's a rubber grommet it needs to go through. Maybe these dudes, I don't know. I don't know if it can fit through those. Those are hard. Those are not grommets, those are... Uh... Here's a little shorter ones. Maybe those will work better than the white ones. So, I mean, this is, you know, we're testing it out, right? Seeing how things work, if it works. Oh, there's a rascal. <clears throat> Come on. 
maybe they're just, yeah, maybe they're just too deep. Ooh, I've got a pair of pliers over there, but I don't want to damage the darn thing to get out of there. But I think it's probably, it's time for it. There it goes. Oh, I just busted that off. So it is, I'm gonna have a hard time coming out now. So, look at how fast we can swap it out and change it. Wow, this makes all of our dreams come true. <clears throat> See if this one can, if these little guys will work. They won't go in probably because it's too thick. It's too thick on the back. Oh mm, boy. And these things when I'm pretty much almost need to be through metal, like sheet metal, if these are gonna work. So, you know what? I think there's ones that are too long and these are too short. And so I need to find ones that are in the middle and see how those will work. Maybe they will be a little bit better. Or yeah, maybe I could throw one of those like bushings on top of the white ones just to prove that once they're the right fit that they um, will work. All right, so here we go. There's this. Does that fit through there? <clears throat> here it goes. Now does it go through there? It does not, good. All right, let's try it one more time. Where'd it go? Did it just roll somewhere? Did it fall on the floor? I didn't hear it. Jeez. Crazy. Where'd it go? All right, on to the next one. I'm not gonna have very many left. Oh, there it is. I'm gonna have enough of them left to use, go through them that quick. Well, that certainly helps, <clears throat> and it gives an idea of how much smaller they need to be than the white ones. That's what I wanted to know. The long ones, how 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 long, how too long are they? <clears throat> and this is a, this kit is from uh, this is the hardware kit from a make block kit that Chris was talking about yesterday. So. That's way better and feels ready. Oop, my stomach just growled. Okay, well, a lot better, right? Still, there's still a little bit of play there, but that's that may be passable. And again, we can just order new quick, quick.
quick fasteners like that that are smaller if this ends up being a workable solution. Cool. All right. So that is a success. Things that need to change. One is I think we got a little crazy by making it this tall because obviously as this thing rotates, it reveals it back there and it reveals it there. And so we need to bring that down so it's not so um, so it's not so tall, right? <clears throat> so that, and if we need one that's that tall, we can have our tall version and we can have a shorter version too. So it's not that we won't use this, but it'll be a different kind of character that will use this one than, than this character, which is gonna be rotated right pretty much from the bottom. Because if, if he were rotated more from the middle, you know, and you're seeing the servo back there, but if he's rotating from the middle, you'd need that. You'd need that back there. And maybe we can, you know, face it or something like that. So with a, with something like painted the color of the, um, whatever they're sitting on, the benches or that they're sitting on, so that it looks like, like the, the seat back. Okay, cool. So, onward. This is uh, what we created. I wanna say that we created this backwards, right? We totally did. So everything, with the exception of probably the camera and the light. Shift S, cursor to center, R, Z, 180, oops. 3D cursor, R, Z, 180, there we go. <clears throat> Look at that, it looks like um, in here, tab, A, A, control, N, those normals, normals need to be flipped. All right, so now the next thing on the docket, and <clears throat> another thing that could be fixed is that once you really kind of know where you want these to be at, you might do one that rotates this so it's thinner and so that this is center line um, off the rotation, because right now this side is the center line of rotation, or this side, depending on how this is stacked in there. But obviously, if we want it to go up and down, um, we have to orient it this way to at least get a, get a feeling of how things are working and everything. And, and most of the characters don't have the bottom on them, or most characters wouldn't necessarily have such a small bottom on them like this light bulb does. So. All right, so the next thing is, we are going to want to add a, um, an object here that can be applied to the back of the puppet or the piece of wood, <clears throat> probably like with like construction adhesive or something like that, that can then be fixed to, uh, fixed to the servo and removed. <clears throat> because we don't want this part to go on there and all of a sudden that servo is tied to that character forever. It'd be good if we could set it up, we could break it all down and put it back together if we need to for that character or swap parts out easily and quickly. So I'm trying to think of how we should do that. My first thought is some sort of key or a magnet system. I put magnets on here, like four neodymium magnets on this and four neodymium magnets on, on the, the paddle. And so they can click together. And then it's gonna be a really pretty strong bond that you can then pull off. Use Velcro. You know, Velcro is another option where it'd be a, make a paddle here, then a paddle that goes on the on the character and Velcro them together. That's a possibility. And that way you could, um, you know, screw on 
one paddle. Like I'm, I'm trying to think of like, do we are we actually going to use this servo control horn? Or are we going to make a, a brand new one? <clears throat> probably making a brand new one is probably, you know, using this as a model, you know, taking the holes out and just scaling it up a little bit. It's a good uh, method for doing it. I have neodymium magnets someplace. I don't know where those are at. So I will have to just kind of throw them in there at a, at, a, at a guest size, probably something like, you know, three-eighths of an inch. They're probably not a half inch, but they're not, they're not a quarter inch either, so they're probably like three-eighths. Cool. Well, anyway, let's uh, stop talking about it and start doing it. So control shift S, up one, save as, tab into this, and um, the tab out, that's on five. We're just going to work in this spot first, hit period to go to the center of the object, tab into it now, and let's go to Z, one, A, and not box select, but let's do a control select. We're going to go through and do, 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 just select all that. Hmm. Stop my expectation. A. What am I doing? Control Z. No. Just control. Select. And uh, I'll make those faces. And X. Delete the faces. All right, so they're not all. There is some like uh, different sizing happening there. Do this <clears throat> X versus delete those. B, go box, oops, A, B, box, select this, and shift S, tab out, shift S, cursor selected. Hmm. Is there more than one thing selected? Shift S, cursor selected, okay. So, S, Z, zero, G, Z, minus, and let's say 10. Whoa. It's way bigger than I thought. Okay. Control Z, G, Z. Minus 2. So that would be a 4, a 4 centimeter circle. No reason not to make it a circle. That doesn't look, that doesn't look like the right size to me. I'd, I'd say it's probably about an eight. So it needs to move two more. GZ minus two. All right. And now we will select those. B, the box like that. Cool. Spin. Roop. It's not enough. Let's try 12. I think it might be 24. No, oh, looks like 12's right. A, A, W, 4. A. Huh. I thought that there was a edge down there. Escape. Oop, just G. Move that there. There. Right click. Right click. Alt M to the last. <clears throat> Box select. One. Spin. Hmm. Control Z. Box select. There we go. Now spin. 
great. But that didn't go. <laughs> oh, all right, so one spin. Now it did. A, A, W, four, A. Okay. <clears throat> so here we got go. We've got a paddle. Um, on our paddle, we do not want that sticking out. We probably want to have, um, or we could have those kinds of shapes sticking out so that there's like a, like a little bit of a key action so that the, it's not just the, the magnets that are you know, tying those two things together. I'm of the mindset to just say, hey, let's select that, shift S, cursor selected. Right-click that, right-click that, S, Y, 0, A, A, W, 4, okay, and shift E, minus 1. Okay, so before I figure out how to fit those things in there, I'm just going to put an object over here. Um, so let's, if I look here, and this looks like the, so shift S, cursor selected, that looks like it's on the 45. Now shift A, I'm going to put a cylinder there, and it's probably more like an eight or a four sided cylinder. The radius, um, point six two five, no, point three two five, point one eight, oh, two five, I can't remember what it is. Point. Now, of course, I'm doing like I'm, I'm doing um, imperial standard here. Old habits die hard. So if I were to do a handy dandy quick conversion, I'd do three divided by eight is point zero three seven five. Okay, and that is the, the diameter of what I was thinking. So divide that by two, and that is point zero one eight seven five. That was the number I was trying to remember. And um, if I'm going to convert that to centimeters, I would multiply that by, point, by 2.54, and that is 0 0.047. So 0 0.047, so let's just make it a 0 0.05. That seems tiny. <laughs> uh, all right, point. <clears throat> I'm going to do a little quick little measurement here. My doodad inches. It needs to be ten times that size. S ten. That doesn't seem right either. Something's wrong with the math. Give me a second here. So, I already said it would have been 0.325 total diameter. Come on, 0.325 divided by divide that by two is 0 0.1625. Three divided by eight is 0.375. Then divide that by two is 0.1875. 
multiply that by 2.54 and set it as point, point 0.5. Okay, so yeah, that's closer to it right there. And of course that is, um, if we're trying to make a mat, the actual magnet, <clears throat> that is uh, not going to be accurate enough. Let me tab out real quick. Do a shift A, and let's just do a circle there. And R, X, 90. Oh, darn it. X, delete, shift A, mesh. Circle, 32 is fine. Radius, 0.5. It wasn't exactly that. I want to see what that was again. 0.325 divided by 2 times 2.54. All right. And okay, so that's more like what the magnet would actually be like. So we tab into here, because what I want to make sure is is that as you go through, as we go through and actually add a subdivision surface to this, that it all of a sudden doesn't, you know, become too small. It looks like it's still some clearance there so that's good okay so we'll turn that off Z so this is on this is right up to the axis that's great um, this could probably move out here doop doop and then here and then come back out like that that's cool that's cool you can put one through here and maybe one one two three to make that work now, <clears throat> we do have to do X, delete that face, and we're going to select Z, where is that? There it is. Select that. Okay, that can stay, actually. I'm going to ring select this, E, Escape, Shift S, cursor selected, and let's. We're just going to scale this to something that looks right. Scale. I think that looks right. One point. You want to put one five? Looks good. So then SZ 1.15, SX 1.15. Great. Okay. Z. There we go. And we're going to do a loop cut and slide here on this. Zero. Zero that out. And we'll do a loop cut and slide here, and we're going to get pretty close to that edge there. Undo it and we do it again. And out here, too. Okay, so I don't know that that's gonna work yet, but probably could have counted better. I'm just kind of winging it, but well, that's what we're doing. And it looks like um, this here, Shift S, cursor selected, these are much lower than my expectation. <laughs> They're lower than my expectation. 
All right. S Y zero. And we really don't want this ring here. The faces. X face. And these should be tied up to here. F. Boom to boom. Groovy, okay. So now this can go to here, control M to last. Huh. No worky. Just to this, control M, last. Is there two on top of each other? What is, what is this madness? And it may look like I should have even done a, uh, a 16 because this is now here. This needs to go here. All right. If we have to, we'll, we'll fix it. Why'd, why'd no one tell me? Because <laughs> no one's here. <laughs> Is anyone no. It's too early. Why do you do this so early? Z. All right. AW4, there really is a, I don't understand. Okay, that's what that is. Okay. So what I'm getting at is, is that this here has a certain amount of, amount of um, vertices, right? Um, edges. And for the size this is, it really needs to have more there. We can add a, a, we can add a loop here, we can add a loop here. Um, but now it pops out to two out here. So if we add a loop here, that will go there, but then we're gonna have an extra one out here, and so that won't work. All right, well, it's better to make, move these here. And then we do have a quad there. It's just a weird shaped quad. Now this one here isn't. That has the same issue though, but I can make a well, it won't help if I make if I loop make a loop through here, just to add that because then I'll make this non-round. I mean, do I cut like this here and here to do a similar shape here on the outside, and then have the other ones? That comes there, oof, that's awful. No, I just think that for now, we'll just do this. F, F, A, A, control N to recalculate outside. Turn our smoothing, look at it, cry.
Shift E1. Okay. Shift E1. He is a shifty one. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> See what's doing all kinds of weird. I mean, it's kind of a nice design, but it's doing weird things for a mesh. I do like this one side's flat too, so that this is clear. Oop, that's not fat flat anymore. I was like, I like it. it's flat because then it makes it easy to print out. Well, the other side can be flat. But the other side will have two flat sides. Honestly, this here needs to probably be around there and solve that problem. I don't think it's worth it though, really. And that, that is a question is, is if there's another circle out here, would that be better for that mesh? Hmm. Okay. Thinking. Tab out. Shift D. Escape. So now I have a duplicate. Tab into that. Edge select. Shift S. Cursor selected. And then let's do a S Y minus one. Oops, A, A, S, Y, minus one. Okay. And we will do, tab out of that. And I'm just gonna move this out a little bit. G, Y. And then we're gonna tab into that. Control N to recalculate outside. Cause we just turned it inside out is what we did. And then tab, we don't want this there, tab into it, Boop. go to orthographic view by hitting five on the number pad, tab in, Z, A, B, dink, and X, you can pull out those edges. Control down. Hmm. X edges. Z. <coughs> Pardon me. Wow. All right. So now. Like this, Shift S, cursor selected, and then bink, bink, and we can do SY zero. 
Okay. And AA tab. Let's move this to M6 and go there so we don't have the object in our way. And um, <clears throat> control one. Hit C to do the paint. Paint deal. Paint select. Oops, rats. Right there at the end of all that. B, no, escape C. Escape. And um, I don't remember how far that was out there, but let's say tab out, tab in, select the edge, <clears throat> edge length is 0.25 centimeters. So let's go, let's go over here too. So G Y point two five. I'm gonna look on this one for a little bit. So that also might that also means that these probably need to go in GY.25. GY minus 0.25. If I go to the side and hit Z, that comes right up to that back of that. Hmm. I'm gonna undo that real quick. A, B, box select. I will select this and we'll do G Y minus 0.25. Z, we'll select these four. G Y minus 0.25. Okay, so <clears throat> if we have a 3 8 inch neodymium magnet and uh, we glue them in here, and we have in the other ones that will those will key in together, these will be recessed on this side, on the other side they will be the opposite of recessed, <laughs> protruding, I guess, and, um, and then they will click together. Now, some of these things are gonna be too tight of a fit, like this for sure, so shift S, cursor selected. So let's make it 2% bigger. S, Z 1.02, S, X 1.02. <clears throat> these I think we can almost tab into this shift S cursor selected tab out again tab in again Z A deselect B the box select go to here and we're going to vertices A B all those vertices there. And S, X, S, Z, zero, S, X, zero, A, A, W, four, Z. Okay. Lots of triangles. <clears throat> now it went in a little bit. I didn't do S, Y, zero. There is a little doodad in there, is why. X vertices. Z. Cool. Okay. 
Now, is this the best surface to glue that to? I don't know why not. Maybe having extra holes there or something would be better. But I think right now we'll we'll uh, leave it like like that. So this is the one that screws into the servo. This is the one that goes on the back of the paddle, the paddle in the back of the cutout. And so then this orbits will you know, orbit back and forth, and the other one goes along for the ride. And we can quickly take that off <clears throat> if we need to and swap things out. Move characters around, because <clears throat> they would all have the same key on the back. We don't even know if that'll fit on the servo yet or not. <laughs> Do not know that without doing a test print. And I don't know that these will, the neodymium magnets will fit in there if I have three eights. So I probably need to go and look and find those. But anyway, that's kind of where we're at here today. I think we've uh, completed the goal. Now we need to, I need to find some magnets that I can put in there and um, confirm their size. If I, I'll go ahead and tweak those. Um, you know, the sizing of it needs to be, you'll get the idea based off of how I did it already. And um, other than that, I'll, I'll, you know, set it up like in the last video, at the end of the last video, I, sh I showed how you uh, set things up for, um, for the Ultimaker. And so I'll go ahead and I'll print that out. And we will see what they look like when they're done. So cool. Anyway, thank you for uh, checking out uh, Cart Robot Chores this morning. And um, <clears throat> thank you for checking out Robot Chores this morning. And um, yeah, if you like the content, be sure and share, like, and subscribe. Hit the notification button to know when we're going live and that type of stuff. And um, until next time, uh, toodaloo.